For November 12th, 2021, we talk about Gloomhaven, House of Ashes, and we ask you which game protagonist would be the worst friend. Welcome to Level 393. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome back, Ben. Welcome back, Jala. Yay! Yeah. (laughs) Jala, you don't sound too good. Uh, I got my COVID booster because I am primary caretaker for my immunocompromised disabled elderly parents. And Mm -hmm. so... Uh, that was yesterday. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was fine this morning, and then it started hitting me in the afternoon, and then I was under a heated blanket for an hour and a half freezing and burning up at the same time. It was great, but <laughs> I I think I have come out the other side of that, but I'm very tired, so <laughs> I apologize for the lower, lower, subtler tones today, oh. if such is the case. Yeah, well, I, I, it's I, a nice I, production, the part of Jala will be played by... <laughs> <laughs> right. J- right jala 85 percent speed yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i appreciate you being on uh e- yeah. even even in spite of that i also recently got a booster and uh i i felt so bad on saturday that i did not stream so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i understand yeah what what's the statute of limitations like how long do you have to wait before you can get a booster six months yeah okay all right mm-hmm. cool yep so um, well, but yeah, well, what's uh, what's going on besides that, Jala? Oh, well, uh, recently I finished listening to an audiobook. I'm constantly listening to audiobooks, and I always post what I'm listening to on Instagram story and on Twitter. But um, the one that I just finished today was called Finding Latinx by Paula Ramos. And it is a really, really good book that I would recommend to everybody, actually, mm. no matter what your uh, origin it talks about different um, marginalized people within the Latin community, uh, the indigenous Latinos, such as the Mayans, Afro-Latinos, uh, trans and LGBTQ Latinos, undocumented immigrants, white passing Latinos, Latinos who grew up speaking English, not Spanish as their primary language, things like that. Like all of the people who make up the latino basically constituency for you know voting and for um, mobilization when it comes to political power um but all of the people who don't don't fall under the typical latino umbrella like when people look at me they don't see latino because i look very light-skinned unless i happen to be outside a lot and then i turn brown but most of the time people don't know uh, because I don't have most of the time the accent. I know I realize that right now, talking about it, <laughs> I'm, I have a little bit of that accent back. Um, but that's only because of the the subject matter. Uh, as we go on with the podcast, you will notice it will go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, this was a very, very engaging and interesting book. Uh, for anybody who does not know, I was born here in America, but my dad was born in Havana and fled Castro's rise to power. My mom is Norwegian and German, born in the U.S., but her parents came from their respective countries. My dad, uh, although he was born in Havana, his parents came from Spain. So I'm super European, like from northern Spain, no less. And like Abelita had like blonde hair and blue eyes. So yeah. I'm super, super European. I'm like the the kind of um stereotype for like what people think about when they think about cubans usually because that's all all of the lighter skin cubans are the ones who fled castro and came here mostly and so um you know anyway (laughs) dave is also a large chunk british irish but he's also spanish first american and even east asian so he has a lot of interest in this he has like a a filipino grandfather and stuff and this talks about like cuban chinese people and, and other groups that you never hear about and what their stories are like and you know how that is what the the whole latin x bubble is even if they don't consider themselves to be uh, Latinx by name uh, using that title. So it's a very good book. Uh, and she is very engaging. She reads it herself. 
Hmm. So I definitely recommend that. But aside from that, I also found out that I am extremely grumpy about Pikmin okay. because it is all over my Twitter and I, I don't know anything about it except there's little radish people and I don't <laughs> like it. Um, I want it to go away. I, it is my impression that Pikmin Bloom, I have been informed, I've been educated by John, also known as Tethelus in mm-hmm. the community um and uh greg or soul blazer and a few others about it that it's kind of like pokemon go it's just basically a glorified pedometer except you are creating flowers instead of catching pokemon i'm like i can do that in my fucking backyard (laughs) with some dirt in a pot like i don't need to go walk around with this this game and sprout radish people i and then um dave told me something about you col- or was it dave or was it john i don't know somebody said something <laughs> about bottle caps and you're an alien and i don't know there's people that die I, I i don't know what's going on but i i don't like it and i also i've never seen picross so i don't know what picross looks like but i get pikmin and picross up like jumbled up in my head and so i was just like i I came to the conclusion after all of these educational um experiences that even the very prosaic way that you have described picross to me before cole sounds better to me than this pikmin game it is the bottom of the barrel in my book, and I do not want to play that one. And that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> I, I mean, I have no interest in this uh, in the in the AR uh, version of this. I fell off of I fell off of Pokemon Go, uh, you know, pretty quick uh, in the in the middle of that craze. I never really got into Pikmin because I didn't have a GameCube, and you know that was like. Yeah, it, 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 you were you were star for Nintendo games. So yeah, when Pikmin yeah, came out, the same. Like I didn't have a GameCube, so I'm I just missed it. Yeah, entirely. It missed me entirely. All I know is they look like little radishes, and I don't like them. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. all I have to say. Uh, is is this something that like um, Dennis or Ben has a very strong affection for that they're very upset right now that I don't like I'm just, it? I'm just biting my tongue so hard. <laughs> 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 I, I think I've spent a total of like five minutes playing Pikmin um, games, not not the new mobile one, but yeah, yeah. In, in, yeah. Uh, in general, yeah, previous yeah. iterations, and and I, I could tell you about as much about it as you have told me so far, and no more. The the, the thing that looms large in my mind is is that um, it's it's so ballsy of Nintendo to we already have Pokemon, let's. <laughs> Let's release a game that sounds almost exactly like that using most of the same continents or consonants. Why not? <laughs> ah, I don't know. It just uh, it just just seems gutsy to me. I don't know that I appreciate the cockiness of the move. Ben, do you do you have affection for Pikmin? Any doubt that this is low effort? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I understand, like people who like the games. I believe that they like the games and that, that, that there's stuff there. They're, so they're like uh, simplified uh, simplified RTSs. Have you played them, Ben? I must be living under a rock. I've, I have not heard of this new uh, Pikmin iteration. It's yeah. trending on Twitter. It keeps on being everywhere. It keeps on being promoted. They are promoting it so hard. Yeah, and it's like yeah. every other tweet that I scroll through is another one of the damn Ugh. Pikmin. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's all. I just had to be grumpy about it for a minute and see if there was any kind of solidarity about that. I know you mo- none of you guys are really on Twitter, but like it's just out out in the world. Yeah. I do like the parallels of like tweets popping up all over the place in small numbers, just like the Pikmin themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't suspect as very many of the Pikmin are Nazis. Uh, unlike, um, <laughs> unlike, unlike that would be a weird angle for Nintendo to take. I mean, that they, speak, would be they, they speak gibberish. They make little beeps and boops, so they could be saying some slurs. <laughs> <laughs> When in doubt, Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be the title. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely, I definitely feel very grumpy about this, though. Oh yeah, so. yeah, um, yeah. Uh, ben, how, how about you? You you were you were away yeah. last week. Yeah, I've had some kind of busyish weeks in the evenings a little bit. Um, I ended up going to a wedding last week for one of my friends back in Vegas. Um, it was the cheapest plane ticket I bought in a long time. I got a, uh, 48 hour, like stay there for 50 bucks for Holy a plane cow. ticket. Cool. So, um, and, yeah, but it was cool. I got to see some old coworkers I hadn't seen in a while. So that was nice. I'm pretty okay. Yeah. I won't be so much to see too much, but, uh, I went for a run and I did not sweat the entire time because Ooh. it just evaporates off of you. Mm-hmm. And, 
that's uh, a little scary, I guess. Um, <laughs> Am I dying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was but, this, uh, did you uh, say, I'm sorry, was this back in Vegas or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Like yeah. even, even in November, it's like the sun yeah. is very oppressive. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Because, um, Dave used to live in Phoenix, and so he would tell me about it. And that's why he doesn't have any cold winter clothes. And it's starting to get cold here, but it's also like today was 77. Yeah. But, you know, later in the week, it'll be 50 because I live in Texas and it's super variable. It goes like 40 degrees any given day. So yeah. anyway, yes, I, I, I understand. It's dangerous. Um, you have to definitely try to hydrate even if you don't perceive thirst or sweat. <laughs> Yeah, glad you made it through. <laughs> when in doubt, yeah. hydrate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of things to do when uh, when you're in doubt now. It seems like. And I'm yeah. in doubt a lot. This is I'm, this is making me anxious. Stop, stop hydrating the Nazis. You can't cross them. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, that's cool. Um, they, they have to subsidize the plane tickets to Vegas, right? Like there has yeah. to be something to you know, like to draw people in. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And then I had a nice like passing of the torch on my left ride back to the airport. There's a there was talking to the driver and he just moved there from like South Carolina. So oh. I was trying to tell him like do's and don'ts and like, you know, just you know, try and avoid casinos and stuff like that and yeah, go to the library. Live here. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> cool. Uh Dennis, how about you? I've been good. I uh, I've I've done some reading as well. Uh, and actually some video game related reading. So I, I mentioned a while ago there was a Kickstarter for a book, Monsters in the Dark, the making of XCOM UFO Defense. Oh, nice. Uh, oh. And that, that recently arrived. It's actually been in my house for a couple of weeks, and I've just, I was finishing another book, and uh, so finally I'm tearing into it. Um, and so, yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> so much no. fun. I love it. Okay, sorry. Continue. Uh, so, I yeah, I... Uh, I'm, I'm early in the book, um, but it's it's just fun to even hear in the early sections people talking about how, like, the mechanics of XCOM influenced the way that they thought about designing games. Um, and the guy the guy who did um, uh, Mario and Rabbids hmm. uh, kind of drew some parallels, and there were quotes from him talking about, like, well, the, the reason I thought about Mario versus, or Mario X Rabbids um, as a game divided between combat and exploration was because XCOM had a very clear divide between yeah. the strategy layer and the action layer. Um, it's like, I just, that, that was, that's what you do with strategy games. This, this set the tempo for that. Um, so yeah, been, been reading through that and I'm, I'm sure I'll have more to say as I finish it, but, uh, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's some good stuff. Awesome. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for me, I also have some video game related reading. Um, I love, nice. uh, 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 so it's a, it's a publisher, Bitmap Book, uh, blah, Bitmap Books. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, they put out these just really gorgeous, uh, almost like reference volumes uh, that are about like specific kinds of games. So like the ones that I've gotten in the past were like, uh, it's called the games that weren't. Uh, which is just uh, a lot of almost like short articles about uh, games that uh, were canceled, right? Uh, oh, this just, is fascinating. Yeah, and he kind of explains like here's here here's here's what we knew about this from where, and here's kind of like well just uh, what what it would have been, but it and here's why it didn't come out. Uh, they've got like an omnibus collection about um, about JRPGs, about computer RPGs, and the one that I just got uh, that just got uh, arrived here today. They put out an expanded edition of their uh, the secret history of Mac gaming. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, because you know there was a whole uh, a whole scene of of games even going back to you know just uh, the, the the original Macintosh, uh, you know even after the uh, the like the Apple II gaming uh, g gaming rush, and mm -hmm. j just like everything else, it is a uh, it is a fucking gorgeous volume. It is really good. It's done in kind of the uh, the monochrome uh, style of the uh, of the old Mac games. Uh, yeah, so I can't. This is, uh, this is like a coffee table book, or, or I mean, like it's, it's it, of... half and half. Like it does, uh, okay. it does have like a lot of like big image spreads, and I treat it a little bit like a, like I treat these a little bit like a coffee table book. Same thing with like the hardcore gaming one hundred and one books. Like these are really good to have around just to like pick up and read for like five minutes to like get through a couple of the articles, you know. Mm -hmm. 
um, and learn about games that you otherwise wouldn't have learned about. Uh, so yeah, I'm a big fan of these, and this just arrived today, and I've been too busy. I We recorded about StarCraft II, we did a long episode of WAF, and then immediately I hopped on, I guessed it on an episode of Talking Simpsons, uh, Bob Mackey and Henry, Henry mm-hmm. Gilbert's podcast, and then immediately I hopped off of that and hopped on here. So I've had this sitting in front of me, and I've not been able to crack it open, because <laughs> I've been podcasting since 2 p.m., <laughs> Oh man! I know. Right? So any any time uh, that Cole is not actively talking, assume he's on mute, just leafing through the book. <laughs> it's it's over here. I'm just I'm just admiring the cover, but that's uh, that, that that's all that's happening. I could talk about my 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 uh, epic battle with my old network attached uh, uh, oh gosh storage, the little ser- home mm-hmm. server that I have, but uh, that's on that's on Twitter, and it's me describing. Uh, a machine that uh, works and then doesn't work, and I can't discern why. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Have uh, you tried yelling at it? Um, yes. I threatened to. I threatened to throw it into Lake Erie. Just <laughs> throw it off of a bridge. Oh, I'm not even close to Lake Erie. <laughs> It'd be an hour drive. It would be very <laughs> inconvenient. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, I think that we should, uh, uh, we should, we should get started. We should get going. Uh, what Let's do the, the thing. The, yeah. The usual kind of show with, uh, with the grind, the multiplayer and the end boss. And why don't we get started with the grind, the grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past period of time or so. Uh, so I'm going to do this. Jala, get, uh, tell me odd or even. Oh, man. Odd. <laughs> okay. Odd. Uh, let's do, let's, uh, just generate this between one and 188. So Ben, uh, the number was 88. So it was not, Ooh, I was, uh, I was, was not literally there. thinking like, Oh, are you going to make me and Jella rock, paper, scissors for who gets first? Oh, <laughs> no, no, that, that would be, that would be too much. Uh, <laughs> um, it would be Jala is a rock, paper, scissors master. It just wouldn't be fair. <laughs> yeah. it'd, be, it'd be really weird to do, uh, over audio. I don't know how yeah. to pro I don't know how to proctor that on three. You yell one of the three. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it was uh, Jala said odd. The number that I got off random.org is 88. So therefore, Ben, I lead with you. Okay. Uh, I think I only got two to talk about that I want to talk about. Um, first one, just a quick one Storybook Brawl, still playing it. I guess I didn't give it up. Um, they continue <laughs> making updates to it. Um, they made an update, I think, yesterday. So it's, they're kind of like aggressively moving things around. Um, so like trying things with different powers, putting them at different levels, that sort of thing. I mean, I guess largely the strategies are the same, but they're just trying to tweak the balance for them. Um, so it's kind of fun because like you'll be playing it and you're like, oh, this is completely different. Or, oh, I have access to this thing now that I didn't before, mm-hmm. but it's way weaker now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they're just doing balancing with that. Uh, I think my rating was reset to 3K at the beginning of November. I think I've gotten up to like 3.4k, and so I'm somewhere in the thousands of ranking. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still fun. Um, that's kind of like if I want to play something for a short, like 30 minutes or so, then mm-hmm. I usually pick up and play a round or two of that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about that. We've talked about so, that a whole bunch. Yeah, this, this is a bit meta, um, but I find it interesting. There's, there's a bell curve in uh, the number of weeks in a row that a game is talked about and my oh. interest level in playing it. Because uh, it's like, you know, you mentioned it a couple times, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then you, you talk about it for four or five weeks in a row, and I'm like, man, this sounds really good. I should get into that. And then now you're still talking about it. I'm like, I can't. I, I will not come out. There is no escape. <laughs> <laughs> well... I can't help you with that, I guess. But I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll sure free you if you fall in that hole, I guess. Well, um, I, think, I think you have saved me by talking about it for long enough for me to to realize the time trap that it is. All right. Fair. <laughs> the, the larger time trap for me for the past two weeks, though, is I've put 60 hours into another game in the past two weeks. Holy cow. And that is Gloomhaven, because that came hey. out. Oh, hey, hey. Cool. that was out. Cool. They put out the, yeah. f- the full version, right? It was it was early access before, right? Correct. Yeah, it's been early access for like maybe a year or two, something like that. Okay. And then on October twentieth, they put out the full version, the one point version. Um, so that kind of ramped up quickly. I started a campaign with uh, two friends from Austin. They were the people that I was doing a physical campaign with 
back mm-hmm. in the day. Um, and then I started a campaign by myself just to like run through so that like I didn't need to schedule with anyone that I could always just like pick up and play it if I wanted to. Yeah. And then I started a third campaign with two friends from Cincinnati who are computer science people. Okay. So, uh, go wow. burn yourself out. <laughs> those are yeah. Those are all running concurrently. Um, the the one I'm farthest or furthest along in is the solo one. Um, I think I beat one of the main bosses in it like a day or two ago. Um, so I kind of have like side quests and stuff left, um, or like other other core quests, but maybe not the main main path. The semi the side main path. If if I sit uh, okay, I won't I won't ask to try to determine. Cause yeah, I'm for anyone since it's since it's <laughs> now newly. Uh, updated in video game form. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be pretty vague with details as well. How, um, how long does your average mission take you, dude? Yeah, so that's what I want to say about this. Is it is such a quality of life improvement over the board game because okay, you yeah. don't have to, you don't have to set up any of the dungeons. You don't have to run any of the AI. There's no ambiguity about how rules work. They're already enforced. Um, there are a few bugs that have, uh, that kind of slipped through. There's like one game crashing bug where there's one map. I just can't play the game crashes when once a specific character tries to start their turn. Um, so that's pretty frustrating, but that's not enough to like ruin the game or anything. I can just go do another mission. Uh, I think whenever that character that I have retires and I might go back and try it again, but Hmm. that's it. Um, yeah, and so yeah, so it, in that sense, it's like leaps and bounds above the board game, just because like for I beat it in two weeks. I played that the physical game for like <laughs> half a year and like sunk like eighty hours into it or something like that. And we, I, I got as far as the physical game and the digital game within ten hours, maybe. Oh wow! So it's like wow. a, it's like a factor of eight speed up, something like that. So it kind of sounds um, like the best case scenario for the digital board game adaptation. Yeah, yeah, and like, and we even sense that when we were playing the physical game, where it's like, man, like this would be nice if it was digital, because you spend so much time like cleaning up. You have to set up the dungeon yourself, you know. Every time you open a door, you have to put where the enemies and the obstacles are, and then every turn, like you guys, you you do your actions, but then all the enemies have to do their actions. You have to keep track of the initiative order and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So it could, it could, it's something that you don't realize how big of a pain it is until like you have the alternative and it's all like automated for you. Yeah, um, remembering uh, passive rules that are unique to the encounter was yeah, the worst. Yeah, because they're like every encounter, there's something special going on that's really interesting, but you just forget that it's there because yeah. you know, there's so much else going on, and then you get to the end and feel like your win was invalidated because you look at the rule book again and you're like, oh, we, you know, we should have been you know, adding enemies every three turns, or we should have yeah. crushed those boulders on us, or there was an entire yeah. reveal that we never did, or yeah. uh, so, uh, nice to know that you are not missing things. Yeah, and things that are ambiguous, like, uh, for example, like pushing an enemy, like seeing the paths that you can choose or whatever, it's all like kind of clearly laid out, um, versus there's like one move one character can do where you attack in a line, but it doesn't have to be like in a push type line, it can zigzag or go in a circle or something like that. Yeah. And like having that sort of clarity is super nice. Um, they have one funny feature where if you press L while you're in a dungeon, it shows you line of sight from a hex. And it's <laughs> like, it's ab- like this game's a little bit thrown together in some sense. Uh, and I mean this in like, I mean this in a, this would be like if I programmed a game, it would, it would be kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, it, like it shows every line possibility from the hex. So it's showing like six lines, but then mapped to like wh- whatever hex you're pointing to. Okay. So it's like six times six. So it's just showing a cluster of all the, like the lines that might connect two things for a line of sight. And it's like, nah, you don't have to do that dog. You can just, yeah. <laughs> you just highlight what you're doing, you know? Like, yeah. um, so anyway, it's, there's some, there's some jank to it, but it's the, the to its credit it is a pretty close, like one to one representation of the board game, and I think that that is super impressive. Yeah. Who, um, who did this? Was it a tabletop simulator modder, or is it like truly its own standalone thing? It, it's its own thing. Um, the it's produced by Asmodee Digital, but the actual company that made it, I think there's two different ones in the intro. One is like Cellafair Games, but that might be the game company. Cellafair Games, it. yeah, that's I yeah. think it's Cellafair. That that is yeah. the the board game uh, publisher original, and then, yeah. And then it's like Foul Studios, something Foul Studios um, is the, I, I assume, who programmed the actual game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I, I don't know if they're like an in house group within uh, Asmodee Digital. I think Asmodee Digital is in Minneapolis. I think they're based there. Um, anyway, uh, 
Yeah, so good on them. Uh, I know from what I've heard is like the the all the early access stuff had like a lot of a lot more like bugs and a lot more things that were kind of jank about it. Yeah, and uh, and like and and even uh, one person I had talked to about it said that they that they had committed to not like representing the campaign uh, in its entirety. But it, from what I've seen, like everything, at least from what I had played in the physical form, like everything seemed to be represented there in the digital version. Um, I'm not sure if like the endings are different or not. Cause I never got there in the physical version, but, um, yeah. But yeah. Um, and then to that end, the fact that you can play through more of it in the digital version, I've been able to unlock more characters. Um, so I guess I should describe like how this game works. Cause I don't think I've done that properly. This game is basically like a D and D campaign. Yeah. Um, but you, everyone has different classes and it's basically after playing it on computer, I had the realization it's basically like XCOM, like multiplayer XCOM mm-hmm. where, you're, the only difference is instead of it being square, it's like hexagonal. Um, but everything else is kind of there. It's like you move, you have line of sight, you have a range that you can attack in. Um, you're moving through a dungeon. Enemies will pop out. They might attack you. You have to try and kill them. There's not a cover system, so that's like a difference. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then the other part is that it's a deck building game. Um, so on every turn, you play two cards, and each card has a top and bottom action. Typically, the top is attack related and the bottom is movement related. And of the two cards, you pick a top and bottom of each of them. So uh, there's also default ones that you can do. Like you can always do a default bottom action of move two. You can always do a default top action of attack two. Um, and so you basically, as you run through your deck, every time you reshuffle your deck, you burn a card. So you eventually run out of deck, and that's your your secondary like hit points. Where if you run out of deck, you die. Okay. Um, you also have you also have regular like primary hit points. Where if, if you take too much damage, you die. Um, but that kind of puts a cap on it. And and I was so impressed with this in the physical form, but I'm also impressed with it here. It's an amazingly balanced game where you feel like you're right on the edge, like every time you're finishing a dungeon. Um, and the fact that there's so many moments where it's like down to the wire and so close, like it's really speaks to like how well balanced the game is. Mm -hmm. Um, that said, it is very frustrating when you play like a mission for like half an hour to an hour and then you like die because you are like a, a single card short of like doing an action or something like that. Mm, A little, a little bit frustrating that it's like, uh, the stakes are that like all or nothing. Um, it's, yeah, the the format of the game is such that you are always kind of ramping up towards the uh, a crash, mm-hmm. um, and like you know, there are some co- cards that you can permanently discard them to get a really strong action. Yep. Uh, and you know, usually you feel like you don't want to do that because that's that's your health too. But what you realize is like this card is going to disappear anyway. It's like, do I do a really strong action, and uh, that's going to help me end the game three turns earlier, or do I hang on to it so I can survive for one more turn? Like spend the card. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it, yeah. it's counterintuitive in that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like if you cycle through one of those burn cards a couple times, though, you might be able to stretch out a little bit longer and still get the good effect. But yeah, it is it is like tough to say, because if you get uh, what happens is if you run out of hit points, instead of just like straight up dying, you have the option of burning cards in hand or burning two cards in your discard. Hmm. So it's like so you can still live. But now, like the situation is even more dire where you're yeah. like going to run out of deck even quicker. So um. But yeah, the fact that uh, it's been accelerated, I, I, uh, like so the classes you play as, you, you you have a deck. Every time they level up, you add a new card to the deck, and you have a choice of two cards. And the cards, the card, the power level of the cards level up with your level. So like your deck gets better and better as time goes on. Um, and then there's ways to modify your deck in game um, to make your deck even better. So there's a, a, a nice sense of progression where after you've played your character for like maybe 10 or 20 uh, dungeons, like they feel significantly more powerful than they did at the start. Um, and then the other thing is, so your characters retire. So when you pick a character, they have like a lifelong mission, like I want to kill 20 ghouls and then I'll retire. Um, and so when that happens, uh, they retire, they're gone, but you unlock a new character class and then you have the option of playing them or any of the other ones that you've unlocked up to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that kind of gives you more classes to explore. And that's another thing I've been impressed by is I haven't seen any class that really like misses the mark. They're all like pretty well balanced. They might be doing like very different strategies and maybe they might not work, work well together, but like a given deck by itself, like if you're just playing, if, if you could play like a single player game with just one person, they all seem like pretty reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So yeah, so I am I am definitely am impressed by the balancing of the game. Have, um, have you played the Beastmaster yet? Uh, I don't want to say too much about characters you unlock, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is there is that is the one class that I I felt like lagged behind the others. Mm. But uh, but yeah, that's neither might, here nor there. So I might I might well he I I have them at like level like eight or nine right now, and they're like a huge tank. So like. Okay. They soak up so much damage while everyone else can do their thing. So it, it could just be like a good team or they're just a good fit mm-hmm. with what mm-hmm. I'm running. But, mm-hmm. um, I will say, I, by by contrast, it, it is a really um, good design decision to force you uh, to try new classes yes. by way of retirement. Um, because in our Madara game, you get new characters, but there's nothing that forces you to play them, at least yeah. yet. Uh, and, and everyone, like part of the excitement of the game is thinking ahead and planning out your build and having these great dreams for these characters as they level up. And so you don't want to abandon that to play something else because you're, you're so invested. Um, and, and, uh, and so we just, we've, we've stayed with our core for the entire time. Um, I, I think there are going to be missions just because it talks about it in the rules where it will like set certain characters as unavailable and you have to choose someone else. Yeah. Um, but that always feels like being getting stuck, you know, if your character yeah. is the one that's unavailable for a mission. It is nice that they balance the dungeon to like the average level of all your characters. So like when yeah, you retire that, that system, man, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when you like retire your level nine character or something and get level two character, the dungeon will accommodate like that kind of drop in power level, thankfully. But you will feel like weaker compared to the other people you're playing with. So there's that. Um, the amount of math and like design thinking that had to go into that because every mission has yeah. different kind of setups by level um, mm-hmm. is is incredible to me because like you said it is a very well balanced game. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I've I've had a good time with this. Uh, I th- after getting as far as I did on the solo campaign, I I think I'm at a decent stopping place there. Um, so I think I'll just continue the ones that I'm playing with other people and maybe explore the things that I haven't explored in my solo in those campaigns instead, just so I still get enjoyment out of it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm at a good spot there. Um, there are, I do, there are like other characters I want to check out eventually. Um, uh, but I, hopefully I'll hit them in the, in the campaigns that I'm doing. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah. mean, it, Gloomhaven always seemed like it really wanted to be a video game with how complex it was, and it's good yeah. to see that it is it has reached that form because I am infinitely more likely to try it as a you know turn based tactical game than I am a uh, mm-hmm. you know a uh, gigantic box of death because I really worry that I would uh, knock it off a table and kill Greta. So, it's a, it would be a decent duck stream activity I for suppose. people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's but that's another thing is you don't have to have like a party if like say if everyone else is doing other things like you just started you have to play with two characters but you can play them both yourself so yeah. like you could you could run a solo and there's like or or if like yeah or if you have like anxiety about playing with other people or something like that like mm-hmm. you could do a solo campaign with this and it's no problem so that's something that's really nice so yeah yeah Gloomhaven baby mm-hmm. Oh, I should say too. I'm doing one evil run through and one good run through. I was good on my solo one, but we're doing evil in the other two campaigns I'm doing just to are, see all sides of the game. Are there mechanical nice. differences for that, or are you getting different, uh, like you, d- different bits of story? Yeah, so I, I should say, in addition to like leveling up your characters, there's a there's a meta level up of the town of Gloomhaven. There's a prosperity track and there's a reputation track, mm. and so prosperity just determines basically like how well Gloomhaven is doing. If it's higher, there's more items in the shop that you can buy. Um, there's just more. Yeah. So you can, you have access to more things to do. Um, and then additionally, any starting character starts out at the town's prosperity level. Mm. So if your prosperity is at six, then you start with level six characters. So they're already like hitting the ground running. Um, I think the highest you can get, it's nine. Um, yeah, and then the reputation track is like if you do something good, your reputation goes up. If you do something bad, your reputation goes down, um, and that and that has like in-game outcomes where 
it might unlock certain characters or it might uh, affect the merchant prices or it might affect events. So, gotcha. Yeah. 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 And that, I would say that is a system that is not well designed because um, it, it feels like the assumption is, as, as in many games, you're going to play towards the good because we tried to go evil as well. Um, just based on some early way things shook out. We're like, all right, yeah, well, you know, you're incentivized to min-max because it's like, yeah, once you get low enough on the evil side or high enough on the good side, you get something. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, well, let's let's try to really tank out and, and uh, get the evil reward if we're headed in that direction. Um, and there are just so many ambient rewards where it's like if – if, you know, you get a couple gold and, well, we'll give you one reputation for doing something. And mm -hmm. uh, it's like, no, no, we don't want the reputation. Can we refuse that reward? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. it, it was just very frustrating that uh, in, in this system where you could be trying to go one way or the other, there were so many things that were tangentially related to it that assumed you were going towards the good side. Yeah, it's kind so of... It was, uh... it was a reward to push you towards the good side. It's Yeah, it's kind of like a slanted Knights of the Republic because reputation... Like you could do something that's mixed mor morally, but it could increase your reputation, which kind of makes sense if it's like an impactful thing. Whereas, right. like, yeah, I, I I get what you're saying. Where yeah, it's definitely not. It's not like uh, it's not immediately clear like what what you'll get when you choose like whatever action it is. And that, and to some extent, that's by design. But to some extent, it's like yeah, it should be telegraphed better. Like. If yeah. I beat up this child, my reputation should not go up, it should go down. <laughs> well, and, and so many, they, they try to, like, do cool twists, but when, when you're trying to gun for a certain reward, it's really yeah. frustrating. Um, that it, it just feels like a coin flip. It's like, well, it seems like the good thing to do is option A, yeah. um, but then you read it, it's like, oh, option A is like, oh, well, that was actually... Uh, a good person in disguise or the person the person getting roughed up that you saved was actually you know assaulting someone else and haha -ha. yeah. and you're like well okay like cute story that does not help me achieve my gameplay goals and even some of the same prompts will give different outcomes like there's one where it's like you stop and it's like should you eat berries and sometimes you get poisoned and start off injured in the dungeon sometimes you get blessed because they're great berries hmm. it's like those, those are interesting too where it's like you're not sure what to do so well, at least those are temporary effects, right? You yeah, get plus one yeah. to reputation, and you're stuck with that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, and I guess to that point, I do think it's easier to get high than it is reputation. But hmm. yeah, we we eventually gave up, and we're just like, all right, we've let's just go for high reputation because we <laughs> we we are trying to go for low reputation, and yet we're still climbing the ranks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. cool. But overall, like it's it's a phenomenal game, and I'm glad that it's in a form that more people can play. Yeah. yeah. Did you That's ever all I got. Cool. Jala, you're up. Okay. So if you're still alive. <laughs> yeah, are you okay? Uh, I played <laughs> <laughs> mostly just Fire Emblem Three Houses. Um, usually I try to come with at least some kind of short indie title, but there is no gas in this tank. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> Instead, uh, I completed the DLC for Fire Emblem Three Houses, but only after I did the time skip. And you can only recruit the DLC characters, the four of them that exist, um, before the time skip. So um, I did not get to recruit them on this playthrough, but that's fine, though, because I don't really particularly like them mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, the DLC included more actual tactical play than the main game has presented, at least thus far. Mm -hmm. um, I'm currently in Chapter 17 out of 22, so I'm nearing the end of the game at this point. Um, the chapters are going faster at this point, too, yeah. because I'm ridiculously overleveled, uh, just <laughs> generally from how I play, but then also, like... Um, there's not as much going on generally like in the monastery part of the game. So it, it kind of speeds everything up. So anyway, talking about the DLC though, um, I found myself switching to training weapons at times in the DLC because those raised evasion so much and the enemies pack such a punch. Uh, also, of course, you have to deal with like a defensive style of play rather than just straight offense. Cause you can play really offensively in the main game and do just fine. Mm -hmm. But 
Uh, you have to kind of switch to a defensive style, pick and choose what enemies you are going to ignore and which ones you're going to engage. Oftentimes there are additional enemies that pop up on the map that weren't there initially. So you have to account for um, possible surprise attacks, um, you know, flanking, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, too, you have to utilize pulling tactics to draw enemies out towards your main group as well. So you have to be able to pick somebody who is good against the type of enemy that is in front of you um, to pull. Because otherwise, if you pick somebody who's not, uh, it does not have the type of resistance that they need versus whatever, you know, you're going against. Like a magic user um, does not have as much resistance against certain types than, you know, like a physical fighter, etc. Mm -hmm. um, makes a big difference. And of course, um, you don't want any of the flying characters out in front when you've got bow people. So, right. Uh, anyway, so you had to kind of consider more what you're doing and how you're going to approach each of the fights. But I didn't have any wipes where I had to go back and redo. And actually like, I think I only had to use the rewind cause this, this game allows you to rewind time too. So not only is it super forgiving where it has casual mode where your people respawn after each battle instead of dying permanently, mm -hmm. but also you have the ability to rewind time a certain number of turns multiple times as you get stronger throughout the game. It's like building um, in save scumming. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically um, built in safe scumming. Um, but like, I think I only needed that like once right. because it was one of those times where like, there's a battle where all of the DLC characters are like poisoned and you can't get rid of that poison. So like, all you can do is just keep healing them constantly with items and then just make sure that you are playing super defensively and like one of them got dinged once and then I had to like rewind back like a couple of steps to you know undo that but otherwise I didn't have to worry about doing rewinds even on the DLC which is supposedly um, considerably more difficult than the main campaign mm -hmm. so um, but yeah, like having to look at the actual equipment more thoroughly and picking and choosing what you're going to use based on your enemies and having like a plethora of different options available is just like par for the course. You also cannot grind battles or anything. So you have limited resources. Um, th that's the case. Like you can don't have unlimited funding and stuff, but I didn't find myself having any problems with, uh, running out of equipment or running out of money or anything like that. I don't know. I guess I was just playing rather efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't because like whenever you use a special move, it wears down your weapon faster, but I wasn't really using special moves very often, only in certain key instances. Like if I could absorb a hit, I didn't bother with that. You know, like I would just use the regular attacks and then like it just made my equipment last a lot longer and especially if you switch training weapons they have a higher durability than you know some of the fancier like silver weapons you can get later that do different effects mm. so um but it did teach me quite a lot about some of the different swords and or not just swords but like all the different weapons and like sometimes even though the iron is not going to be overall as good as like the silver weapons or the special weapons in some instances it's actually the best weapon you can use and you do more damage with that mm -hmm. than you do with some of the more advanced weapons so originally i had some of these lower level weapons on me just because they were affordable just as an option in case you know i happen to be strong enough to be able to wipe them out with like you know the um less special weapons yeah so, so you so you like weren't chewing through their durability mm -hmm. wasting it when they yeah could, i yeah. was i was trying to conserve all of the higher grade weapons for like boss battle you yeah. know so uh in like you know special enemies and things like that so um that's kind of like how that went um, the final battle of the DLC requires liberal use of gambits, which I need to explain because I realized that I didn't talk about it the last time when I was talking about Fire Emblem for 5,000 years. <laughs> so um, each party member can command a unit of troops that moves with them across the battlefield. These troops all have different buffing effects for their commander and different gambit moves. 
A gambit is an attack by those troops accompanying the player character. If they're mages, they might have like an AoE fire spell or something, and the buff that they grant is for magic skills, like it ups the magic ability if you have that. So obviously you pair, you know, okay, well the mages should be with the mage person, you know, because that's what it buffs. A uh, group of archers will raise accuracy, and they will also shoot an AoE volley of arrows, like a rain of arrows down on like out an area. Mm. Uh, ground troops have any number of different attack patterns, some in vertical lines, some in horizontal. They also buff different physical attacks like evade or attack or defense, whatever. Um, you can also have a battalion of healers that do group heals on a given area as well. So um, there are some characters who unlock uh group heal spells later on but it's not it's not every single character gets every single move the same if they are on the same class path it changes from character to character like i've got three different healers and they all have different types of healing magic and some of them like uh manuela can warp a character that's right next to her across the field and like kind of move them ahead some skips uh Anna it can pull a character that's lagging behind or is in a desperate situation and um, like pull them away from a monster towards her. Mm. Um, Flame has an a, uh, like a group heal that recovers everybody within a certain zone. Uh, things like that. Somebody has you know like a recovery spell that fixes status effects. Things you know so on and so forth. Like they're all different depending upon you know what character is going through that skill path so like it's interesting because that means that uh for replay value you have any number of different paths you can take every different character down and some of them will be more useful to you than others depending upon their predispositions and their strengths Mm. so um but going back to gambits though the number of gambits that a user has depends on their command skill level And as in the other games, you have several different slots where you can stick combat skills based on the level of your character's proficiency and different abilities. So like sword level three gives you certain buffs when you're equipped with a sword and being a heavy armor proficient person means you can have like a weight minus three or something like that that speeds you up uh, despite the heavy armor that you're carrying. Um, as regards gambits, the authority skill gives you extra might when you use your battalion to fight, so that can up the number of attacks that you have versus an, another unit. Uh, there's also other skills related to battalions that are offensive, defes- defensive, and buffs and things like that. The use of a gambit rather than a regular attack means that there is no reprisal from your opponent. So um, even if you do more damage, um, you know, with your regular attack, if you use the gambit skill, you do not get uh, a damage back to you. So if you're fighting a boss and that boss has a very high attack, (laughs) you can hit them with gambits and that will... Uh, both shatter their armor. That's one of the points of using gambits Mm -hmm. um, as well as keep them from attacking you at least during that same turn. Right. Um, So when you break their armor, it allows you to deal more damage when you attack. Uh, The more that you break it, you can crack it or you can totally break the armor. If you happen to break all of the armor off of each of the tiles that the boss, if it's like a big monster, uh, is occupying, then that means that you also get like bonus smithing materials that you can use to fix your items and Mm. things like that. So um, looping back to and tying into the DLC, that final battle you would get completely slaughtered if you weren't using gambits. The enemy just deals so much damage that, it, when, especially and when guarded, takes so little damage that it's basically, uh, you know, like the it's not impossible, I don't think, but it would be very, very hard to win that. It would be like a battle of attrition more than anything else. But yeah. if you use gambits, it's manageable yeah it so takes you out of the uh the, the risking yourself on trading blows yeah 
Yeah, for sure. And um, you have battalions that you can hire. You can change out the battalions as each of your commanders gains levels because they have access to different types of troops once their command skill goes up and their authority level goes up. So basically everybody can benefit from having the authority skill, particularly if they are somebody that you will put up in the front lines for any reason because they will be the people who will reach the boss and be... Um, you know, trying to break them down, but also can stand a blow from the boss without dying instantly. So, yeah. um, but this carried over out into how I was playing the main game uh, because I wasn't facing any difficulty. So I wasn't really <laughs> using gambits much right. because they tend to do, like I said, less damage than a straightforward attack. But when I was facing big monsters or large enemies like constructs, it is just a lot quicker to uh -huh. break them with the gambit and then knock them down yeah so um you know like i just started doing that and that made the battles even more succinct than they already were from my play style so mm -hmm. um anyway uh the fact that i am so far into this game is good because <laughs> that means i'm not very far from being done with mm -hmm. my first playthrough and shin megami tensei 5 comes out uh, the day this podcast episode drops and provided that I receive it, <laughs> I will want to poke around in it at yeah. least a little bit. So, so um, let's so, about it in six weeks. <laughs> right. Uh, but that's okay. I will get a refund if they do that shit to me again. Yeah. They better I will not. do that again <laughs> every single time if they keep that up. Oh, so man. anyway, that aside, uh, I definitely want to replay this with other houses to see the rest of the story. And now that I beat the DLC, I can recruit the fourth house characters as well the next time I go through this game. Hmm. Uh, the other playthroughs should be easier, too, because there's also a New Game Plus feature. And I did have a few characters from each of the different houses in my party. So even if it's only carrying forward um something from the people that i had in my party it would still be very useful to me because i did have people from each house represented except of course for the ashen wolves the dlc characters because mm -hmm. i did not recruit those in, yeah. in time but you'll you'll have those on your on your third go oh yeah yeah so or second go oh, but, yeah. yeah but it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's off by one yeah <laughs> yeah, so um this game as as uh persist it has persisted in having lots of different layers to it. It really does not have the challenge to the main game. Um I might the next time I go through this game, mm -hmm. I you know, even if I, I don't know if I'm going to use New Game Plus or not, it just kind of depends. Uh I might start it that way just to see how it changes things. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I'll probably go on classic mode the next time because I'm not really worried about it. Uh, I yeah. would have hated to try to play the DLC on classic mode, but yeah, yeah, um, especially if it's that big of a jump in difficulty. It just yeah, yeah, that would have been like it's it's doable, mm -hmm. uh, but like I would not want to have to wipe and and redo that yeah, so many I times. Know. So um, anyway, mm -hmm. that's what I've got to say about that. Nice. Um. Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, checking mm -hmm. out the fourth house. Hey, Dottie, you, you need to stop picking things up off my desk. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't have I don't have any other questions about it. I, I, you I, shouldn't. I mean, I was very <laughs> thorough. <laughs> oh man, Your description was quite a gambit. Yes. <laughs> um, Dennis, how about you? It broke all of Dennis's armor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I, I have, I am continuing my run through older mega hit games, I guess. Um, I, I decided to go back to this week, Apex Legends. Oh, oh. okay. And, uh, I, I played it when it first came out on PS4, um, and played all the way through the first season, I think, and like the release of the first big new character and then just fell away from it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was kind of reading about it. There's a, a new map that they just released, and it's a new season. Um, and and I was kind of curious about trying it on PC. Uh, so that's that's what I did. So this time I'm coming back to it on on PC. Um, the new map is really cool. It's called Stormpoint. It is bigger than um, the other map I've played on for sure. Maybe the other maps I, I actually don't know what i've paid no attention to apex legends since i since i played it mm -hmm. uh last so 
Um, it, it, but I read that it's bigger. Uh, and then the other big thing that they're adding is that it has mobs. So mm. a little bit like Cycle, which everyone knows is near and dear to my heart. That's interesting. Um, there's, yeah, there's uh, little mook enemies that you can go and kill for rewards. Okay. So, and, so, so and they, adds, they've taken it away from being just a straight, um, just a straight uh, battle royale that way. Yeah. So you get there's also crafting in the game now, and I don't think that was added with this update. But basically, there are um, uh, consoles at specific places around the map that you can go um, open them up, and if you have enough of of a certain crafting resource. Uh, you can make special items, and those items uh, rotate weekly. Okay, um, which is kind of cool. That you know, based on when you're playing, it's like, oh, look, you can get a really high tier item for this type of gun. Um, so everyone's trying to get that type of gun and, and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, so kind of a, a cool idea. Um, and so the the mobs that you can kill in game give you bonuses um, of that crafting resource. Okay, they also will drop gear themselves. Um, and drop ammo, so they're kind of like loot chests that you shoot, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is of course uh, a lot of fun. But the the big thing that you're giving up by engaging with them is you're you're firing your weapon, uh, which you know paints a big target on your back from anyone close enough to hear it. Mm, yeah. Um, so that's yeah you know, that's uh, adds a new dimension to the game. I think it's. It's been 50-50. Like, it does not feel like a default, let's let's go fight these mobs, and it doesn't feel like a default, let's ignore them. It truly does depend on how well kitted out you are and, um, you know, whether or not you think there's other people around. Um, but uh, it, it, it does create situations where you can get third-partied by a mob, and that feels bad. That feels real <laughs> bad. That you're in the middle of a gunfight, and then this little, like, lion, griffin, uh, dragon kind of creature just yeah. gets you from behind. <laughs> At least if it's another yeah. player, you you know that your failure made them happy. <laughs> right. Yes. This is lost to the soulless machine. Yeah. Um, I, I actually don't know what happens. Well, I guess if you get straight up killed by one of them and, and, you know, don't actually take damage from another player, it probably is the same thing as if you, you know, fall off the map um, or go out of bounds, which it is possible to do in the game. So um, that uh, doesn't doesn't make anyone happy for sure there. Hmm. Um, yeah, so the interesting new ad, and then I, I guess I a new map made me feel more comfortable going back to the game because it puts me a little more on equal footing. Like I, I knew Kings Canyon, which was the first map, really, really well. Like you, you kind of you learn the map of any battle royale game that you're gonna play. Yeah, you play it so um, much. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it just feels a little intimidating going back to the game and being like, ah, but I'm going to play on a new map and I have no idea what I'm doing. That's kind of why I haven't gone back to PUBG. Mm-hmm. Is by the time I considered doing it, there were like three new maps, and I was like, I, I don't want to go lot, be know. the one person who who doesn't know where Harvest is. Like, go to Harvest or I don't <laughs> where <laughs> is you ping it on the map. Um, so that that is uh, that is nice to kind of come in at a time when everyone is new to what's going on, hmm. uh, and feel like that uh, that uh, kind of evens the playing field. Yeah. Um, they also added. I mean, they've added a ton of new characters in the intervening time, um, and specifically released a new one just now. But I'd forgotten just how uh, expensive and unforgiving um, their their microtransaction system was. So because Ooh. I'm going to PC now, um, whereas I was on PS4 before, my progression did not. Um, uh, g- uh, oh, carry over. The, there was no, the, the, there's no persistent account. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting back from square one. I think I did something to like, I think there, there was a chance at one point that I could have linked my accounts, but I think I, uh, I did something for knockout city, mm. which is also an EA game to, to swap my account or associate my account with a new, um, uh, a new PC account or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. so I think I, I erased any chance of getting my, my PS4 stuff. Uh, but anyway, so, but I had forgotten, like I played a bunch originally and I was starting to get close to kind of being able to buy a single character, which, which feels about right when there's two characters to buy. Um, but when there's 12 and they are all still the same price, <sighs> uh, it just feels unforgiving. Oof. Uh, and, and kind of the analysis paralysis sinks in where it's like, all right, well, even if I had enough money to buy one, like I can't try any of these characters. 
Yeah, no there's no like rental or there's no, you know, you get They don't have a rotating cast. Yeah, I think yeah. I think they probably need to go that way that that a lot of other um kind of large cast games go to where you can you, you know, every week there's a certain premium character that is available for free just so people can get a feel for it. Yeah, or put in like um, a different kind of currency. You know, this is a token that you could that you can do to to, to take a uh, take one of these characters out for a test mm-hmm. drive. If you're going to be making an investment, I I imagine the the fear of missing out would be, would be pretty huge if you're investing so much in getting you know getting that you want to know you're going to like what you, what you what you get yeah and i mean their their battle pass is notoriously stingy yeah. um even more so at the start of the game and, and they've supposedly made it better but better in relative terms does not mean better uh in absolute terms yeah um, but it, it's a good thing that you know that base cast of characters is is still plenty viable. You see lots of people playing them, yeah. and I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything necessarily. It'll be nice when I get the chance to buy one new. I just I need to figure out who that's going to be, and, and yeah. that's uh, that's overwhelming. I'm going to ignore that problem until I actually have the ability to buy it. To the wikis, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's what's meta versus what would actually be fun for me to play? And, yeah. And all those yeah. considerations. You, you waste your 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 points on what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Feel bad for finally investing enough time to actually yeah. get a, get something nice for myself. Feel bad for liking something suboptimal. A, a new a new way I can suck at this game. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but it is it is uh it's been fun um and it is a nice I, I was going to draw the connection Ben to you saying like it's a game that if you just want to you just want to do something quick, you know, you can pop into that. I'm I'm amazed that it loads faster on my computer than like Trackmania, which mm. is a pretty low intensity game, I would think, but Apex Legends pops right up. Huh. Um, and looks pretty good, even on low graphical settings. Um, but you know, it, I, I was gonna say that you uh, you know, it's good to just pop in, play a couple games, and pop out. But you know, any one game, if you do well, has the chance to go 20 minutes. It's just the majority was... of the time it's gonna be five. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, gonna get ice. so there's a bit of that yeah. roulette wheel, which is like, okay. Do I have enough time for another game or not? I probably do. Well, you can always uh, just you know, like, thing... okay, I, I, I've got to, I've got, I've got to leave for this meeting. Uh, let me do something really stupid that would be fun, <laughs> or give somebody else another story so I can, I can, I can die in this blaze of glory and everybody's, yeah, yeah. everybody's happy. Yeah. The problem is, is if you actually survive that blaze of gl- glory, the hot drop, the you know wherever everyone lands, it's like you are so kitted out that you're definitely making it to the end. <laughs> so it's, it's like that, that is the right approach. Oh, give, it just has a small percentage chance of backfiring on you really bad. Give, give somebody a, for time. Give somebody a gift. It's like you're leaving. A, it's, it's like you're leaving the arcade because you got to go hit a movie. So like, uh, yeah, yeah. here, you, here you go, kid. You find the you find the the youngest looking kid. You know the one yeah. who who <laughs> seems to need it the most, and then you give them all your tokens because you yeah. can't use them right yeah. oh oh no you beat me good job, good job. <laughs> yeah. okay. i gotta go um yeah so that's yeah that's apex legends if anyone if anyone plays it regularly and would like to hang out um i i'm solo queuing right now so i'm, I'm happy to do it with the squad uh yes. just let me know awesome <laughs> uh did you have anything else no that was that was the one big one and i've been reading my my XCOM book Oh, of course. Um, I don't. I don't really have anything. I finished uh, House of Ashes over the past weekend. Uh, that went in strange directions, but I don't want to spoil where it went. So no, that'll be. I kind of popped in and out for that, and I yeah. was just like, you know, everybody in in the stream chat is now accustomed to my sporadic <laughs> appearances, uh-huh. and they will now give me summaries before I ask. <laughs> of what the hell is going on because yeah, i never yeah. know yeah and with something like you know like like that that is so narrative heavy it's like god ah, i didn't know that person died yeah or you know i just uh mm-hmm. like where, where where is person x y or z uh i i still i i like those games i i recommend like like house of ashes uh it it uh anything that annoyed me about it kind of was redeemed in the end it's a it, it's good I, I I like that team I and the things they make. Say that, uh, I liked that better than I liked the Until Dawn. So oh yeah, yeah. I could, I could not tolerate sitting in Until Dawn yeah. to wait for people to die. <laughs> the, I just uh, couldn't. I was the, just like I can't I can't with this. But uh, the cast I don't know, of shitty teens. Perhaps it was the chat. 
yeah, or yeah. my overall low energy levels <laughs> that kept me <laughs> in this kind of inertia ice. state where I stayed around for a while <laughs> to see what was going on. Yeah, but it's it's just you know like mm-hmm. uh, they're meant to rub you the wrong way. Oh yeah, yeah. You're you're supposed you're supposed to root for some of them to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the only the only other new thing I've not done enough of it to talk about it, but I did try out uh, Let's Build a Zoo. Um, and I, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I streamed a little bit of it, but I didn't get enough of it for me to feel like I can say anything, uh, intelligent or useful about it. So we're going to leave that. Did you ever uh, get anything for your desert? No, no, I didn't get any snakes. No snakes oh. for me. Yeah. Uh, we'll get them though. All, all I've got is geese and bunnies. So <laughs> the geese were happy. Yeah. I gave them a trampoline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Sounds safe. You know, it's fine. It's just, oh, God. <laughs> and then, mm-hmm. Now they can jump over the walls. I don't think they can get out with the trampoline. Um, but yeah, that's that, That's all I got. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer, where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Uh, in the break in between, uh, Jala had to go. She's just not feeling well. Uh, she had the, uh, the, 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 the jab hangover. Uh, which is always uh, preferable to actually getting the disease itself. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. it just uh, it, it, it did not make sense for her to continue being here. She, <laughs> if you felt me, if you felt me speed up at the end of that, uh, at the end of that grind, she signaled. She put a little skull and crossbones in the Discord, and I was like, okay, we, we, we I should probably yeah, we'll record. <laughs> yeah, we're record. Not let's, loser for good. We yeah, gotta, we let's, make let's, here. let's let's give let's give her an out. So I I appreciate her hopping on, uh, being here for uh for for how uh how long she did, uh, given I like, how bad. I like I like that we have a safety signal now too on Discord, <laughs> like behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, and also this isn't live. If if one of you guys is like, "Hey, I need to leave," I can I can always <laughs> edit it out and explain it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to hold anybody here against their will. Uh, <laughs> Dennis, what is the question that you ask the nice people? Yeah, so we spend a lot of time playing as video game protagonists, but they're not always the people that we would want to hang out with. So, which video game protagonist would be the absolute worst to have a fr- as a friend in real life? Yeah, and um, uh, D- David hops in here with the first one, kind of, kind of maybe swipping one of my potential ones, uh, saying, Alan Wake, intolerable dickhead. It's pretty, he's not, like, as as bad uh as uh as as a lot of people like the the, the image on uh the the post image is kratos like fuck that guy <laughs> uh but uh but alan wake uh you spend too much time in his head i i, I you know yeah yeah that's what i, I was thinking about is like what how much do you hear and how much is like just him narrating yeah he's also like real mean to his he, like he's a dick to his wife and a dick to his only friend you know like it's sounds like a writer. <laughs> it sounds like a stereotype. You, you could be creative without being a dick. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no! I have some calls to make. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, ben, what does Michael say? Michael says the guy from Katamari Damacy. Uh, I'd like to keep all my belongings. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the start, at the end, I would like to not be part of a star. Do not roll me up in a ball and then send me into the fucking sky. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, man. Um, uh, let's see here. Dennis, what does OMG and Moose say? Uh, they say JC Denton. Just what I want. Some nerd wearing sunglasses at night with a trench coat and always ranting in monotone about some conspiracy theory he just heard about. But he would warn you about whether or not there was a bomb. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sean says, Sonic the Hedgehog, there is no way I could keep up with him. Uh, also, like his, I, I don't know. I, I mostly know early Sonic characterization from the cartoons. Seems real impatient, and I don't, I don't like impatient people. You know? He'd just be tapping his foot at you all the time. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't rush me, dude. Come on. <laughs> You're trying to lay your feelings out, and you start hearing the dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give you something to dun 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 about. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, ben, what does Greg say? Greg says Shepard from Mass Effect. They would always be talking to me every ten minutes because they forgot what I said the last. 
asking me for favors. It might be friendly one day, but hostile the next, depending on if they feel more Paragon, Paragon or Renegade that day. <laughs> oh, and if I was on the Normandy, I might get attacked or blown up at any moment. So thanks. <laughs> I will stay on a planet. There's still a chance I'll be blown up, but uh, less chance than on the Normandy. And if you're a good, good friend, you'll be sacrificed to the writers in Mass Effect. Mm, oh, no. s- sac- sacrifice to the what? The writers of Mass Effect Three. Yeah, yeah, it had to be. It had to be. It had to be them. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Uh, that was you, Ben Dennis. What does David say? David says, "Any silent protagonist." I asked you a question and would like a response, not a thought bubble appearing above your head for me to interpret with our other friends. Yeah, no, any any silent protagonist it might as well just have a, a cardboard cutout, just a cardboard mm-hmm. cutout of Chrono. Well, and it, it, too, if it's a, a game in the style of Half Life, they would just be running around and, and messing with stuff while you're trying to hold a conversation. Yes, <laughs> stop fucking jumping, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Callum says Doom Slayer. Uh, just looks at just look at how he treats the key card guy. Yeah, Aww. that'd be pretty rough. <laughs> um, sorry, Dottie has laid down and is knocking stuff off of my desk. Um, as as she should. Yeah, uh, she she belongs there. Uh, <laughs> ben, what does Tom say? Tom says, any character in The Last of Us, if you're their friend, you're going to die soon. Any main character in The <laughs> yes, Last of Us. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, Bill doesn't die. You know. Does Bill not die? I, he has a fate almost worse than death. I mean, he does lose his his, his boyfriend. He Like, he, now, yeah. huh. And then he he sets up traps to not let anyone in. Yeah, uh, it's it's all it's almost emotionally. Like, yeah, it's, it's almost it's almost like the town is a metaphor for Bill. I think mm-hmm. the town is a character itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a foil for Ellie and Joel too. Ooh, how their relationship I don't, can go. I don't Re- <laughs> watch the bonus level of The Last of Us, guys. We talk about it there. <laughs> I don't know Ooh. why I'm like. It sounds like I'm just like shittily making fun of the story of that game. Actually, I, it's I, actually good. Yeah, I, I <laughs> it's like. Very well done. I like that game, and I like Bill. <laughs> Bill's a good character. Yeah. That's a good section of that game. <laughs> uh, it's <just> weird. Uh, <laughs> We're reducing to him him to the counter example of someone that doesn't die. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's let's see here. That was that was you, Dennis. Sorry, I'm all no, I'm all messed ben, up. So I'm, that was Ben. I've, so I've this, got the next David. This will this will be you, uh, Dennis. What does David say? Uh, David says, "Oh God, the pro- protagonist from Disco Elysium <laughs> would maybe maybe be good to hang out at a bar for a single conversation about cryptozoology. But anything more than that, stay far away." I mean, I'd rather hang out with him at the end of Disco Elysium than at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's he's so I mean, in the in the lead up to the game, he emotionally traumatizes people with his behavior. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a pretty good answer. Oh uh, God. It just speaks to the patience of Kim. The, the, the video gaming's greatest character, Kim Kitsuragi. <laughs> I I am only halfway being uh, uh facetious when I say that. Kim's great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, have, I have no point of reference. I, I am unspoiled on Disco Elysium, and I, I uh, hope to stay that way until I can get around to playing it. Um, I can't recommend it enough. It is it is one of my favorite games. Uh, it is it is now just don't talk about it too much on the show, other otherwise I'll get over right. the bell curve and start to lose. Oh. So. <laughs> it, 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 it is it is beautiful. It is it, it is a game with more heart than I think I have uh, seen in most other games. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Eli says the boulder punching asshole himself. No doubt. Uh, he won't stop <laughs> talking about when he punched that boulder, uh, referring obviously to Chris from the resident evil series, presumably late era Chris, as opposed to early era squeaky clean, uh, goody two shoes, Chris. Mm. Yeah. I mean, resident evil late has him being a pretty bad friend. <laughs> uh i I don't know i don't want to spoil resident evil 8 it came out too recently uh ben what does tyrus say tyrus says leisure leisure suit larry laugher oh my god that's too much is probably pretty insufferable to hang out with 
Huh? Yeah, he's, I, mean, he has a, I I would assume that's the kind of character in the kind of game where the protagonist would just not have a last name. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, the 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 first one is uh, is 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 Larry uh, Larry Laffer, uh, and then he plays as his, as his nephew in the even worse uh, uh, follow ups. Yeah, no, it uh, it is it is very bad. He is crazy that that was only thirty years ago, huh? I, I mean, yeah, yeah, but pretty crazy. So it's a it's a weird it's a weird and bad series to me. Uh, to, I guess I guess comparing the worst of anything from any time to the current the norm of another time, yeah, maybe yeah. unfair. Yeah, it, it speaks to the the human condition of not being able to remember what it was like to not know. Yes, mm-hmm. parse uh, that sentence together. But like you know, once <laughs> once you know, and I think particularly once you know better, mm-hmm. it is very hard to empathize with the you or yeah. the anyone else that uh, that does not yeah. know better. You guys, you guys thought it was you guys thought it was a good idea to make a to make a game about this sex pest, huh? All right, okay. Mm, cool. Huh. Um, <laughs> let's see, Dennis. Guess what we'll, does? Yes, we'll talk to about our therapist about that in a couple of years. <laughs> uh, Dennis, what does Gwen say? Gwen says, "Kratos from the picture, excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, most of them are just horrid conversationalists." Yeah, which I, I'm guessing means just in most of the games. Although I do like the idea that there are uh, multiple Kratai. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I, I almost said Kratopodes because I was trying to do a, <laughs> to, <laughs> try, trying to, trying to Greekify it. Uh, oh, but, man. uh, that does, that, that doesn't make a goddamn lick of sense. <laughs> and that uh, is why it's correct. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This is me. Tyler says the paddle from Pong. Anything you trying to talk about would just bounce right off of them. Well, I, think, I think Tyler's ha- Ty- Tyler's having a little fun with us. <laughs> Went for abstraction on the answer. <laughs> uh, there was a Pong reboot on PlayStation One. Was one of the first video games I ever got for the system, uh-huh. and I think they anthropomorphized it. I got to look this up, but I no. think I think that what they did make it someone that could be interacted with. Yeah, there there was a there was a whole bunch of uh, like modernizing uh, arcade classic kind of stuff happening in the late ps1 early ps2 era i would not uh mm-hmm. i would not put that above them mm-hmm. yeah um let's see ben what does uh what does chris say chris says oh my god chris redfield yeah <laughs> doubling down <laughs> see before yeah and uh dennis what does rookie say Rookie says Link would straight up suck to be friends with. He'll smash all your stuff every time he comes over and take whatever loose uh, change he finds in it. He's constantly giving you the silent treatment, and if he gets his hands on a candle, he'll try to burn down every tree in your neighborhood. He's got the Triforce of Courage, but no wisdom to temper it or no power to back it up. You're going to be in a lot of losing bar fights since he's basically just a silent Leroy Jenkins. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the plus side, at least he'll mow your lawn for free. Excellent. <laughs> very, v- very well done, uh, Ricky. Uh, a g- good, uh, g- g- good anchor answer here. Yeah. Um, I, I like he would probably be a really good friend if you were um a a potter or a ceramicist yourself. Uh, mm. your your business would go up every time he came to town. Yeah. 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 You just got to keep him out of your shop proper, so you've got the inventory. Oh yeah, I know he's 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 an out he's an outdoor friend. <laughs> 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 oh man, um, my answer, uh, Lance Vance from uh, 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 Oh gosh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. City. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously Tommy Verschetti, uh, like he's a he's a psychopath. Like that is, it's very clear that you want to stay away from him. Lance will um, insinuate his, himself into your life by being seeming to be a real helpful stand up dude, right? But then uh, very quickly he will turn super sulky and insecure, and then betray you. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. to spend all of his time getting drunk and like yelling at you for not appreciating him enough or whatever kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to hang out with Lance Vance. I think he would be a bad friend. I'll find a new person to chainsaw a human with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, ben, how about you? I, I I don't think I have a good answer for this one. I'll I'll go with Willem Dafoe from Twelve Minutes. But <laughs> oh jeez, because he's he's pretty set on murdering you, and it's really hard to talk out of it. So. <laughs> That's what the whole game's about. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> and Dennis, how about you? 
Yeah, I'll go uh, Legend of Zelda related as well and go with Navi. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. constantly bothering you. No Just sense of volume control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I'm right here. We're the only two people here. You don't need to keep telling me to listen. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, hon, babe, listen. <laughs> no. Um, and Jala, uh, before she left, she did leave her uh, her answer uh, here, and I'd be remiss if I didn't share it. Uh, she said her answer, uh, though she does not like any of the characters in this game, like the, 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 they are all dishonor, honorable mentions for her. Uh, special note needs to, or uh, special honor, dishonor, uh, needs to go to Dante from DMC, the, uh, the Ninja Theory uh, reboot of Devil May Cry. Uh, the regular series, uh, the regular series Dante, she's kind of met about, but the, uh, the shitty teen Dante, uh, uh, she, she has no patience for him. It's the hair color, man. And also <laughs> everything else about his personality. Yeah. I would go with the other stuff first. She, <laughs> she said she knew like, even just in the, uh, like in the introduction, like, oh yeah, no, fuck this guy. So mm-hmm. when you know, you know, <laughs> uh thank you dennis uh for uh uh posting this question thank you everybody for uh responding to it if you would like to participate in these go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for the prompt to, uh, the prompts to go up on monday afternoons the end boss now it is time for the end boss where we talk about uh, uh things that are going on in the world of video games that are exciting to us uh jala posted hers first i don't I, this isn't my story she, she 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 knows more about it but it seems remarkable uh uh you may think big video game controllers probably uh uh the original xbox uh maybe that uh, that weird chainsaw controller that came with resident evil on the uh resident evil 4 on the gamecube uh they have nothing on this new guinness world records entry uh or winner uh which is a nine foot tall uh video game joystick modeled after the atari uh, uh I'm, I'm i'm looking at some pictures of i i initially thought they were full-size people and i was like that's crazy no it appears to be kids <laughs> but they're still dwarfed by it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah uh, so that is on display at a, uh, um, oh my gosh, where is it? A Laborial Art and Industrial Creation Center. Yeah. In Spain, apparently. Nice. Yeah, the the joystick, it toured Spain, uh, the United Kingdom and the United States, now part of the permanent collection uh, of ZKM Center for Art and Media in Karlsruhe, Germany. So I, I, it is a big miss, in my opinion, uh, in the picture. They've got a giant joystick, but there's a giant screen accompanying it. Mm. And what I want is the giant joystick just with a tiny little CRTV, uh, just to really <laughs> emphasize the difference. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, want, you want scale. You want, to see, you, you want to make it really pop. <laughs> uh my story or no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do mine dennis how about you uh do yours so i'm not doing two in a row yeah a, a, a new game with a cool idea um the game is called mirror layers which is right up there with rural juror <laughs> uh, in terms of not great names oh, so God. mirror layers 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 just just, just, mirror just pre- pretend layers. pretend you're tom brokaw mirror layers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh so so this new game um takes a, you take some water game. and you put some sugar in it yeah <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> sorry it, it is silent hill in format in that it is, you're kind of stuck in an apartment but there's kind of two versions of the world that you're going back and forth between and you're trying to figure your way out um but the really cool new tweak they've put on it is that they in the quote unquote normal world there is a pc in game that connects to an actual wiki for the game Mm -hmm. Um, and part of the game is adding entries to the wiki and uploading things that you've found that other people can then download to help them in the game Mm -hmm. Um, and and we've gone from just games assuming that you're going to be playing with a wiki open uh, a la dark souls to games building the wiki into the game yeah, uh, and, and having that be part of the interface and part of the game design, which is really cool. Like, yeah. I, I like that idea. Um, and there was, um, I'm blanking on the name. David played it. There was an MMO of sorts, um, Lost World or New, it's not New World. Um, um, oh, no. It, I uh, you know it what? It was in game. You would search for stuff. Yeah, uh, I it was need like to. Web browser in game. Uh, it was it was made by Majesco. 
uh, games. Uh, damn it, the secret world. There we go. There, secret world. <laughs> Uh, yes, so it's it's got that kind of style uh, of interface going on, um, and and apparently it's kind of a, a really cool in terms of helping you progress in the game, but also feeling like you're kind of uh, building relationships or connections with all these other people going through the game at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, drawing the parallel to Dark Souls, all of the soapstone messages that it's it's this horrific world, and you've got just enough of a connection to. Um, other people that are experiencing the same thing. And in this setting, you kind of grasp onto that. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's really cool and thematic. Um, I don't know if they ever do anything to start like messing with you. Like it's a really interesting to me that that the wiki is housed in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it would and be that, that seems, a wasted opportunity okay. if they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I would be interested. They don't spoil anything about that in the article. Um, but then you can also apparently like download plans for things that you then 3d print in game Mm -hmm. that, uh, then help you progress. So that begs the question of who was the first person to discover that thing? How does does that work? Um, but, but a really cool idea. Check out (laughs) mirror, mirror, Uh, mirror mirror layers. Yes, mirror layers. Mirror. It's a it's a warm up now, um, and uh, and you get kind of a new twist on that format. Yeah, it's not every day you see something taking off of um, Silent Hill Four, um, mm-hmm. which is uh, uh, I have a complicated relationship with that game. Uh, I'm generally in favor of it, except when I am playing the back half of it. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I this this caught my eye. Uh, I was initially a little bit kind of, eh, because it says uh, multiplayer, but the particular way it's in multiplayer is super interesting. Uh, I would, uh, I would look for this to come up on a, on a stream eventually. Yeah. Now we, now we just got to find out if there's a way to invade someone else's room. I mean, it'd be neat. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ben, what's happening in Back for Blood? Yeah, I just got a tiny one. Uh, In December, they're releasing an update for it where you can play solo mode through the campaign. Mm Mm-hmm. This was this was news to me. I did not know that you couldn't play solo in Back for Blood. I thought that um, uh, like th- there was like controversy about it. People were kind of salty about yeah. uh, uh, about the progression being separate uh, or different. So specifically, they if you play offline, they put you into a format where you are not able to progress or earn. Um, badges out of whatever they have that you would want to earn right right um they just yeah. kind of very very clearly raised a middle finger to anyone that was not going to be playing connected to the internet yeah um mm-hmm. yeah so it good to see them uh fixing that obvious mistake that shouldn't have been there in the first place yeah cool i mean i played that i played that game a little bit over the weekend i still have no idea how it works but it's fun <laughs> to shoot zombies with friends so. yeah it's uh, at, the, at least you're you'll always have that mm-hmm. yeah um, and then my story, uh, this is related to a game that I talked about last week, Unpacking. Uh, I still recommend it. Like, it has done nothing but appreciate in my mind, uh, Unpacking. That's really good. The game about unpacking boxes uh, throughout the course of one uh, young young woman's life, starting in 1997 with her um, uh, being about, like, seven years old, getting her own room for the first time, and then going uh, uh, through adulthood. Uh, but... Uh, oh, yeah, it's real pleasant. It's on Game Pass. I I, I can't uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's modest. It's 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 quite brief, but it is uh, it is just right to me. Uh, but something that is very funny is uh, the the character that you are unpacking for. Uh, you know, she's 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 got 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 kind of some geek uh, geek tendencies, and you, you they they have created pixel art versions of all of her old like video game systems and stuff, and it's like old Nintendo systems mostly. So like you know she starts out and she has a Game Boy etc uh but uh just just so all of us can feel uh can, can can feel old uh there has been kind of a uh a rush of people who have been really unclear about what the gamecube is and where it should go <laughs> hey guys oh, no what's this uh they, they they think that it looks like a uh, a kitchen appliance, you know, like a microwave <laughs> or a rice cooker or something. And the game, by default, it won't let you put something in like quite obviously the wrong spot. Like you can't put the crock pot in your shower or what have you. No matter how fun that would be, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> what if you want some stew? Don't you like having hot steamy rice in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> What 
out some showers too. Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so people were, were, were posting like, Hey, hey like, like just, uh, in, in, do you have any, uh, any advice for this? I have no idea. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, people honestly not knowing, uh, what a, uh, what, what a game cube is, uh, just, uh, I don't know. It's it, it, I, I'm going to need to get used to that feeling, which is, which is, which is fun. Um, on the bright yeah. side, if you have that feeling, it means you're closer to death, so you won't have it that much longer. I know, right? <laughs> oh. On the what side? Oh, <laughs> uh, I just, uh, just, I, I, it is, it is very funny, and I just wanted an excuse to talk about unpacking again because it is good. Mm-hmm. You didn't lose your bear, did you? No, no, the, 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 the oh. I, yeah, I, I want to reassure Phew. people. You know, much like the uh, the website uh, does the dog die, you do not need to be uh, worried. Uh, about uh, uh, about the bear, I will not spoil uh, where the bear ultimately ends up, but uh, it uh, it is not traumatic. Let's say it went to a farm upstate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, that's where they moved, so it's it's fine. I mean, we all went to a, <laughs> yeah. we all went to a farm upstate. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that's that, that that's all that I've got. Uh, how do you all feel about buttoning it up? Let us button. Thank you so much for uh, listening to level number 393. Uh, we're going to pour one out for Jala. Uh, she, she's fine. She just wasn't feeling well. She had to go. Uh, but uh, Robitussin we, is what we're pouring out. Y- yeah. It, 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 it's it's a real dick move because she could use it really badly. Like, like <laughs> she, she needs that medicine. It's for her. But it, now it's on the ground. That's pretty insulting, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, appreciate the gesture geez kind of a lose-lose situation because now we got robitussin on all of our floors but. yeah yeah it's a real pain in the ass to get out uh anyway <laughs> i'm trying to think the only thing that i can say is uh aside from the usual admin stuff you know how to about the show uh remember save the date for december 17th 18th and 19th that'll be uh duck stream we'll have details about that as we get a little bit closer uh to the uh closer to the date also uh because we have thanksgiving coming up we may have a we, we may have a week where we don't do an episode we'll talk about that uh so as we go but uh you know, I, it's, it's, it's nice to, it's nice to focus on family stuff, uh, when the holiday comes up. So that's all the programming notes stuff that I can think of. Um, I'm missing anything. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, until next time you can find me on Twitter at Cole Ross. I've been Cole Ross. I got it messed up. I got it all messed up. I've been Cole Ross. <laughs> now, we, yeah. now we all have to do it that way. No, no, you don't. You don't have to do it like I do. I'll, I'll take it clean. I won't edit it out. I, I'll, I'll I've, leave. Oh, go ahead. I've been Dennis Fury. You can find me looking disapprovingly at Cole. Okay, no. <laughs> I've been Cole Ross. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Ross. There we go. Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I've been Dennis Fury. You can find me on Instagram at Deck of Wonders. And I'm I'm doing a run of of uh posting up a bunch of art for the game that has been in different interviews that we've done, but it has Ooh. not been on Instagram yet. So oh, nice. new ish art going up right now. Yeah. You can find Jala at Jala Chan in places, and I've been Ben Merkel. Thank you. If you didn't do it, I would have. And stick around for some titles. Who has titles? Good week for titles. Hmm. What you got? Let's see. I've got uh, Ben said this, and I giggled, and then didn't get around to commenting on it. Commenting on it, but default top action. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was what was that? Uh, that, was, oh, that was from Blue Haven. Haven. Every card yeah. has default top action, default bottom action. And I was okay. thinking, yeah, <laughs> seen ads for those. Um, <laughs> you, you went with that over default bottom action. <laughs> <laughs> Either one works. Come on now. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Kratopodes. I have I have Kratopodes as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silent Re- Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> uh, an outdoor friend. <laughs> I forgot about an outdoor friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then Shower Stew. <laughs> okay. Ben, what you got? I only have two. I got A New Way to Suck at a Game and Shower Stew. Okay. Um, 
Okay, the the the, the uh, uh, vote getters are Kratopodes and Shower Stew. I don't. I, I think Kratopodes that 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 only works in sound. It's it's mm-hmm. funny, but uh, um, I don't I don't know that I want it to be in in, in text. So Shower Stew is uh, is there. Um, I want to make a case for default top action. That's that's fun to me. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want default bottom action? We can go either way. I, the default top action is funnier to me. The default bottom action. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for that. Any any objections? No objections. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Good well, times. I'm gonna go. I've had an incredibly long day. Yeah, race yeah. well run. Go <laughs> collapse somewhere. <laughs> oh, I will. Uh, take care, everybody. Um, if I do See not talk ya. to you uh, between now and then, happy birthday, Ben. Thanks, man. Yeah. Have a have a good week, y'all. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Right. See you guys.